Hi everyone. Hi. It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> we like Fridays. Yeah. It also means it's time to talk about art. And we're gonna see when people start joining. Yeah, so it is Friday. Yeah. Any plans for weekend? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How about more homework? No. <laughs> Yeah, it's been very busy week, this homework. Hello, everybody who is just joining. I just finished a story, come on. Yeah, you just finished uh, doing it. So while we're waiting for everybody to join, there is another minute. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't joined our um, live streams before, please make sure that you have got images ready uh, for children to look at. Because the way we do uh, these lessons is that Melina will uh, perform visual analysis of uh, two images and I will supplement them with a bit more information, so I will add a little bit more to them. Images are available in this group, uh, Playing Art Historians, but also on Vincent and Frida's um, actual website, you'll find them. And this week we are looking at... History. History painting. Um, and just to let you know, um, type up uh, your names if you would like to, and we'll do as many shout outs as we can. Yeah, just uh, say hello and then we will know who is watching us. Also, if children uh, uh, say some uh, uh, comments um, which uh, match what Melina has been describing, or if they add something uh, which M Melina or me haven't uh, mentioned, also please um, uh, put some comments there so we can, um, we can respond when we see them. Hi, Eleanor. Hi, Eleanor. Good to see you again. Hi, Hello, Eric. Eric. Welcome. And we're going to start very shortly. So, Milena, before we start looking at images, what do you think history painting is? Kind of like paintings that have been painted through history. You know, like cave art. Okay, so you uh, it was painted at some time in the past. Um, it's kind of correct, but also there is a uh, high units. And, um, but also history painting actually uh, means that uh, the, uh, the story in the painting is supposedly from... History? Yeah, from something happened before. Oh, like horrible history, something like that. <laughs> like horrible histories, but uh, uh, it could be uh, displayed in many different ways. And we are going to look at two very different artworks today to show that. So, if everybody is uh, ready, uh, hi Kira, is every, if everybody is ready, please children start with looking at first image and it will be by Paul de la Roche, it's called the execution of Lady Jane Grey, parents do not panic, yes topic is quite sad, but the uh, image itself is not, um, you know, not gory um, and quite easy to look at. Hi Duncan. I will be saying hello, you can start looking. So it's about two minutes that uh, Melina will be spending uh, looking at the image and performing visual analysis. So when we do that, uh, we take in as many detail. Um, yes, uh, uh, good to hear that some people have seen that before. Uh, this image, um, this painting is uh, held at uh, the National Gallery in London. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, I'm sure when you will visit the National Gallery in London, you, you will see it um, because it's actually quite large image and we'll talk about where it's set um, in a minute as well. So have you seen it before, you think? No. No, you haven't. We haven't been to National Gallery for a while. We used to go to more modern galleries a lot, didn't we? Yeah. So have a look. What do Mm. Are you sad? Kind of. Mm. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Well, what can you see? Tell us. So I see a lady blindfolded. Mm -hmm. in, and... And then who else is in the image? There are two men... And can you see anybody else there? I see two people by a stone. Two, two, two ladies, right? And then do we look um, upset or do we look um, happy? Upset. What 
yeah oh wow the beheading stone is sterling mm, we have not seen that okay so and then look at the man on the right hand side what does he have in his hand he has like a gun no he has one of these those axes yeah he has an axe so what do you think it's actually about to happen he's about to chop her chop her head off what why yeah why so this is a history painting so it's um it's a um, actual moment before beheading of uh, jane gray she is also known as nine days queen so she was a oh. queen for nine days why well um her brother uh, um, uh, he wanted uh, her to become um a queen but uh, he, there was also another half sister Mary, and um, uh, she was uh, actually named by Henry. I don't remember which Henry one. Henry VIII. Mm, no, well, well, oh. he was. Uh, she was named um, to be a queen, but they kind of decided not to do that and put Jane Grey, uh, Grey instead uh, um, to be a queen of England. Uh, she never managed to get enough support from people and from uh, um, aristocracy, so other kind of um, people around the uh, royal court. And um, Mary came with uh, her army and uh, came to the tower where Jane Crane was actually uh, living and, um, you know, um, said, sorry, you can't be a queen, I'm going to be a queen. And they actually tried her and convicted her of treason. You know what treason means? No. It's when you're betraying your country and your king or a queen. So in this moment, um, this is uh, six months after uh, Jay, uh, Jane Grey was uh, convicted of um, treason, um, this is a moment where she actually is about to be executed. And uh, as you can see, the man uh, on the right is her executor. But then who's next to her? So those two very upset uh, ladies are what is called uh, lady in waiting. They, they in effect are the most trusted um, um, ladies, uh, like friends, around the queens and around the um, um, princesses. So they're very upset because they, they know her very well and they really love her. So one of them, as you can see, they both are not looking, but one of them even turned away and hugging the wall. And another is um, just you know, in this very slumped figure, like she knows that it's inevitable, it's going to happen, nothing can stop this moment. Yeah, but who's the man next to her? Who is the one who is leading her? Yeah. So that, that moment, it's, he's one of the lieutenants, uh, one of the soldiers um, uh, for the queen, and what he's doing apparently, um, according to uh, some of the documents we have, um, uh, Jane Grey was saying, "Okay, wh what shall I do? Um, where is uh, the block?" So she's she's asking um, how to find it, and he is taking her hand quite gently, and like leading leading her to touch it, so she knows uh, where to put her head down. But then, why is she blindfolded? That actually uh, was uh, quite a tradition to uh, behead people um, blindfolded. This is how executions used to happen. So history paintings, they actually focus on on something quite significant. It's it's uh, it means it's not going to be somebody going for a walk and uh, unknown person just uh, cleaning up um, kitchen. It, it will be a moment we, which has got um, a big importance in, in the history of uh, a country or um, a society. And um, the painter himself, De La Roche, so, uh, he painted it um, uh, in 1833 and the beheading was um, in 16th century, so around 300 years later. He was actually a French painter. And um, if you look at style itself, do you remember um, landscapes? Yeah. Do One you... of them looked really real, like it was a photo. This yes. One kind of looks the same. Exactly. And do you remember the um, term academic painting? Yeah. So it's rules by academy, where um, academy was saying which way 
um, painting should be uh, constructed and also executed. So if you remember about brush strokes, mm -hmm. you were saying as photography. So what usually, can you see brush strokes or are they um, varnished over and not really visible? But yeah, I know, but, but why did they decide to chop up her head? Why didn't they just not let her be queen and... Or just send her away, yeah. yeah. So because she could come back and this was um, very cruel times and uh, actually, you know how you're feeling sorry for her? Yeah. Are you feeling sorry for yeah. her? This is exactly what Painter was trying to do. Um, he wanted to paint this moment and um, present uh, Jane, Jane Grey as an innocent victim of these circumstances where she was made a queen, she really didn't kind of like know, know if she's supposed to be a queen or not. Um, you know, and instead of sending her away in exile, they actually beheading her. So he, he achieved what he will, you know, f through your response, because you are feeling sad and sorry, he managed to achieve what he wanted you to feel. He, you know, he, he actually captured the moment of people you never heard before of, or you heard a little bit, but you don't really know personally. But, um, you know, he managed for you to feel emotion to um, what is happening in front of you. And... Um, it's it's kind of this history painting. Do you think they always accurate, or they can be sometimes a little bit um, like mixture of imagination and uh, accuracy? Mixed up with imagination and some accuracy. That's that's correct. And in uh, this particular painting, it's a mixture as well. So what is um, uh, historically true? Because there are some documents uh, exist which describe eyewitness. Um, um, you know, the moment, the moment uh, of beheading, um, that she indeed was looking for a block and she indeed uh, kind of was asking to guide her to it. Um, however, beheadings usually were happening outdoors. And uh, it's quite a tricky question, but why do you think instead of painting it outdoors with a lot of... Um, other people around because the beheadings usually were very public lots of people would come to them why do you think um paul de la roche actually decided to paint it um against some kind of a wall as if it's inside it's it's tricky question so if you don't manage to answer it's fine uh, i don't know you don't know because when he removed everybody else and just put those people in front of you you're kind of there you know, you're also blocking out all the other things and all the noise and all the distractions. You're really focusing on these figures. So historical paintings, we can either uh, be presented in if there's a lot of people, a, lo a landscape, a lot of details, animals, or it can be like this, a moment in time with just a few key, key uh, figures um, oh. in there. Yeah, And... Um, Quite often, um, uh, quite often, um, this um, uh, subject matter, his history painting, is quite dramatic and, and sad because they, they really want you to feel like you are there. Yeah? Let me just see if I have mentioned everything I wanted to... Ah, just one thing. So, um, if you're curious why a French uh, painter yeah. uh, would like to uh, paint actually something from um, English history, it's because in France there was a French Revolution um, about, I don't know, 50 years uh, before this painting was painted. And everything was still fresh in the memory of French people about how royal family got beheaded there and how, um, you know, um, Republic won. So he couldn't quite paint uh, French um, kings in this position of like, you know, that you would, would feel sorry for them. It would be a little bit too close and it would be a little bit too dangerous for him to do. So by Delaroche choosing to paint about uh, f something about England from 300 years ago, he could um, draw some parallels, so kind of like uh, making people think, is it really a good thing to behead somebody? You know, is it really um, what we should be doing? 
but at the same time without risking um, any of his uh, reputation and his, uh, or um, livelihood. Oh, that guy. Yeah. So uh, sometimes they play uh, this subject matter, and uh, one more thing about the um, uh, about the painting uh, here. So if you see, can you see any shapes on the image? Mm. Kind of like if you imagine that um, if if you imagine that uh, there are a group of people, can you see that they are actually formed in a triangle? Oh. There are definitely two mm -hmm. triangles, and the figure in the middle, you know, in a, in a, uh, Jane is a, is dressed in white, and she is forming triangle by herself, but also with um, Zedley Turner, who is um, uh, leading her on. This actually has been used uh, before many many um, times, and after as well. Because those triangles will really create sense of unity and really help you to see images um, where we're focusing. So kind of like when you look at some images in the future, remember about triangles and see if you can spot them because uh, you probably will see them a lot. So let's see if there are any questions before we move on to the next um, image. You are feeling very sad, yeah. aren't you? But that's important thing that you recognize that, that um, you know, he, he uh, I mean, painter, uh, De La Roche, he managed to do what he wanted to achieve. That's amazing, isn't it? That you look at it and you really think what the destiny of a young um, girl. She was only 19. All right. Uh, next image, please. We'll uh, look at uh, Pablo Picasso. And Picasso? It, you heard of Picasso? Yeah. Yeah, the image is called Guernica. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Is that his style of painting? Shapes well, and figures. Shapes and figures, yes. I don't even know what type of history this is <laughs> with these shapes all around. <laughs> So it is trickier, right? Yeah, I can't do this. this yes, you can. Because uh, what you do is the same thing. So just focus on actually what can you see, even though even though you uh, you want to say that it's um, chaotic, like messy, right? That it's uh, difficult to work out. This is exactly what you um, what you okay to say because this is what with your eyes. This is what you're observing. The closer you get, the harder it gets. So the more when you go back, you can see better. Yeah. I, I think I get it now. I think I can see it better. Oh, okay. It's just like the shapes are jumbling into each other. Mm hmm They are really all kind of uh, interlinked and um, overlapping in some mm -hmm. spaces, for sure. I want to walk back a little more, you know, just so I can see it better. <laughs> and while you while you're finishing looking at it, um, I'll tell you about its size. It really is huge. It's it's um, about three meters long, so it's from this wall to that wall, and it's probably as, as from the floor to all the way to the ceiling. So it's so big when you look at it, and it's uh, in Madrid. So it's in a different country. Yeah, it's not in England and not in London. All right, start. I think I see a lady poking out the wind. Can you move in a bit? Grab, looking with a light. Yes. I think that's a man drown going in a <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really confusing? Yeah. Right. It's too confusing. It okay. looks like it looks like. This horse is a waiter. I <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm loving all your descriptions. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and even the adult in, in front of uh, Guernica would be um, very confused. So let's, uh, let's um, start with kind of like, let's go to emotion. Because you had very strong emotional response to the previous image. When you look at uh, Picasso's work, Guernica, um, how does it feel to you? 
It makes me go like crazy. I'm like, what's this and what's that? It's kind of making me confused. Making you confused. And then if you look a little a bit closer at, for example, woman on the left hand side yeah. and the woman on the right hand side, their faces. Uh, do they la look to you peaceful, calm, or... Um, uh, They're so scared. They look really upset and scared and scared. I don't know what's happening to this lady over here. It looks like... What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll explain. Okay. So it's... Um, uh, believe it or not, Melina, this is also a history painting. How? But it's not classical history, uh, academic painting, like the one we just looked um, before. It's actually um, much more contemporary and it was painted at the time uh, where this event happened, which I will tell you a little bit um, about in a minute. So, um, it, it, history painting not necessarily means that everything like photograph and, and uh, an image which you would, for example, read a text uh, of event uh, happened and you look at the image, it completely makes sense. History painting can, can be also a criticism and, and a response. Mm. So do you think artists um, liked whatever event he was uh, painting? Yeah. It looks like he put so many shapes together. Yeah, but do you think he, he thought it was a happy event or was it uh, scary and... Um... Scary. Scary. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to this woman, what she's doing. I will, I will explain to you. So, um, Guernica, in uh, Spain, in, uh, it was painted in uh, 1937 uh, by Picasso in response to what happened to Spain. So we had the civil war, uh, in a, and it means that people of the same country were fighting each other for power. And um, Oh, like they used to do. To see it, who whoever won, they would get to rule that part as well. That's right. And um, uh, the party which was at the time um, in charge, we have asked from help from another countries where we had similar sort of ideas about how to rule um, a country, and it was um, uh, called uh, fascism. So we asked uh, German uh, Nazis. Uh, to fly over the city of um, Guernica, it's actually quite small, so nearly a town size, and they dropped lots of bombs on that uh, city to show the other side of uh, Spanish um, um, Spanish um, people who w wanted to uh, get actually a republic, um, that um, they better stop fighting. And um, what Picasso wanted to, he, he basically read about this event in newspaper and saw some images, not of people, but of like destroyed um, uh, city and buildings. And he felt, felt so desperate. So he had already commissioned to do something for uh, one of the international exhibitions. But he, he didn't feel inspired, no, nothing was coming to him. But as soon as he read this, um, he felt so upset and so anti-war and um, that he created um, that mural. So it's creating where everyone's going crazy, like getting scared. But then why did they drop it on in that part of Spain? Because there was a road, uh, which was very important road. So you couldn't get to um, other parts of, of Spain if you wouldn't cross that uh, little town or the little city. So it was uh, quite uh, small, but significant because of where it was located. And you, you know, uh, most images here are actually images of women. And that's because uh, in that town, uh, most men went to fight the war, um, you know, and um, when bombs were dropped, it was mostly children and women who got uh, killed. So all of this, like, really scary, desperate, um, um, you know, desperate people, they, they um, were portrayed by um, Picasso because he wanted to show um, how cruel this is. And he didn't want to do it with, like, you know, lots of red. You know, what colors can you see? Only black and white, there's no colour. Yeah, and I can, see, so I can see that there is another comment about black and white, no colour. Correct. And um, there is, there is um, one art historian theory in it that uh, Picasso wanted, to, uh, wanted this painting to look like a newspaper of the time. 
So you know that it actually makes it um, real, makes it contemporary, and remo uh, removes uh, removes everything what distracts us. It is very weird. Also about the shapes, Melina was saying. Um, so uh, Picasso uh, was one of the artists who painted in style called cubist. It's not purely cubist, but it has got a a elements of cubism. And to think about cubism, it's a little bit like uh, Lego. You have different parts which you put together to build something, right? Because you quite like Lego. Yeah. And he was also building different, you know, uh, eye shapes. Um, and... Oh, shapes to form a picture. Exactly. Yeah, but why did they pick that town? Why not another town? Because that one was um, uh, easier to get also. It's quite, it's quite uh, at the north of um, uh, Spain. And um, for Nazis, it was easier to fly there. Yeah, but then he would kill more people. Did he know that that's what he was doing? Yeah, that's uh, that's what they decided to do. But from formal, uh, like from visual analysis, uh, can anybody see triangles here? Because yeah. this is... Uh, can you point away uh, exactly? Is it on the left-hand side? Or on I the... see somewhere there, and then somewhere. But I mean, as composition. Can you see there is a, a big triangle in the middle again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I see it. Like the light is uh, yeah. actually looking and there are many many more triangles actually uh, the way uh, everything is formed and where do you think all the like most of eyes are looking like if you see at the horse uh, Where mm -hmm. is it looking and this lady is uh, where she is looking and where they're does all this... looking out at the bones uh, At the bull can Bone. you see the no, but mm -hmm. can you see the bull? Yeah, yeah so bull is a symbol of Spain so we're all looking at the bull and kind of like, what is happening to us? What is um, this very, very terrible event? So you... Um, but did he, did the person who dropped the bomb know he was doing the, a bad thing? Yes. But... Uh, what happened to him for doing it? I think nothing. Not at that time, yeah. But you know, there is a symbol of hope here, and it's a little bit difficult to find. So, like, of course, whole image is very intense, uh, you know, black and white, lots of deserted faces. It's it's very different to what we have seen before. <laughs> but can you see the little flower? Yeah. And it's kind of so fragile, growing right from uh, right in the middle of everything. But it um, sort of symbolizes uh, hope. And uh, you said that it was very difficult to work out what is yeah. happening, yeah? Picasso on purpose did it uh, like that. He didn't want us to think about um, particular place in space. He actually, even though he named it as Guernica, he wanted us to generally think about how terrible war can be and the suffering of people can be really so bad. Oh. Did he? Do you think he managed to do that? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, and... Um... There's a question. There's a question there. Why did he use shapes? Well, he uh, wanted to depict the reality uh, differently. So cubism is something needs a whole separate uh, lesson. But he um, he didn't want to paint any more as we saw previously representative uh, art. He wanted to show it from different angles mm -hmm. and different compositions. So he was way more interested in kind of creating this um, broken image, um, which you you have to put together in your mind versus you just look at it. You actually have to do a bit of uh, work in it. Um, and before we finish up, so the history of the painting and what happened to it. So um, after exhibition, oh. the war was uh, World War Two uh, was uh, coming to everywhere to Europe, and this painting got shipped to New York, to Museum Museum of Modern Art, and Picasso asked um, uh, to look after it um, until those terrible people who ruled Spain at the time, uh, fascists, were no longer in power. So this painting stayed in New York um, until um, nineteen seventy. 1978 I didn't write it down but then something like um, something like 50 years it stayed uh, in New York for safekeeping but eventually it did come back to uh, Spain. it did make its way to Madrid is it broken now? no it came back completely safe uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York looked after it very well really well
Ah, actually, if we go back for a second to the uh, previous image, it has a history as well. You know, it, uh, people thought it got damaged. There was a big flood um, in 1928, uh, Thames flood, and it flooded Tate, um, um, Tate Museum's um, um, basement. And everybody thought it got ruined and disappeared. For 50 years, nobody knew that this painting was okay until one researcher went to look for something else and then found this painting building all rolled up and actually in excellent condition and it made its way back to the gallery. So we lucky find. Sometimes images have, like apart from their own stories, what they tell us, you know, on uh, on actually what you can see, but it's also a story about their creation and about uh, their uh, their lives. But how did that stay in a flood? How did it get uh, undamaged? I don't know. Got lucky. Do you want to do you want to go and have a look at it in real life? Yeah, yeah. No, it's also no. really big. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> You'd rather not. You got too impressed. Well, I promise you, next time uh, we're not going to look at anything so sad. Me. So let's see uh, if there are any questions about um, any of uh, any of the paintings or history painting. I know it's been quite a lot. So children, I'm very impressed if you're still able to follow the lesson because a lot of um, um, time, I, when I choose something, I think, um, is it a little bit hard for young ones? But at the same time, um, I, I do want you to think and it's not just about um, kind of like looking at my, uh, beautiful images and uh, appreciate them. I also want you to start thinking about what do they actually mean uh, within the, our history and within our societies, you know, what kind of uh, what kind of messages they send. So I, I'm sorry if it has been a little bit sad for you. I promise next lesson will be much more fun. So when, uh, we're not going to go live. Um, next uh, Friday uh, because mm. um, my mother she is together with us on lockdown so we are going to celebrate her birthday it's uh, on next Friday and it's also bank holiday so we're all gonna take a little break mm -hmm. yeah we're not, we're yeah. Not gonna, but a uh, week after that we'll be back and shall we do leisure so fun mm -hmm. times we're gonna do fun times in images so so mm -hmm. uh, what do we what do we actually um, show and what we're about so we see you after the bank holiday. Yeah, see you, see you soon. Bye bye. Bye.